Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good people, it is Thursday. Thursday is the 8th. Today is a great day. It is the Immaculate Conception. Today we shall have so many things that we will be able to be, fo to be following. But as the online community, today from around 9.45, we will be following the church dedication in Karen, the city of Nairobi, Kenya. We'll be joining the Christians and the Friends of Regina Sherry, a Catholic parish in Karen. Uh, we will be able to come to you live in Facebook and YouTube. We want to support the Christians of Karen and in particular, Reverend Father Stephen Omondi for the great work they have done to build that magnificent church of God. So I will be requesting you to join us later after nine that as we come live uh, from Karen Regina Cherry, uh, will be, uh, the liturgy will be uh, celebrated by uh, His Excellency the Nuncio, assisted by His Grace Archbishop. Philip Agnoro, I'm sure, with another host of religious leaders. We will be coming to you live. As we prepare for that, allow me to share with you some essential principles of spiritual growth. As I told you, we are going to do a lot of spiritual growth during this time of Advent, and maybe later then we shall do a number of things as we prepare for the new year. The first essential principle of spiritual growth is silence. And we say silence and stillness are essential for spiritual growth. Silence and stillness. Did you remember what we added with yesterday? It was silence. There is some beauty in silence, the life of silence. Silence and stillness. We won't grow spiritually if we are perpetually noisy. Number two, be open to new beliefs and ideas for spiritual growth. It, it's a question of teachability. We cannot remain in a certain cocoon and we want to, to, to grow. We need to be open, to be inclusive. Diversity of ideas. We will grow as we learn from others and other situations. As we read about men and women of faith who did so much in their spiritual growth. Number three, let go of attachment. Let go of attachment. Sometimes attachments keep us grounded so long. What are you attached to? Let it go. Number three, number four, compassion. Compassion. And here, I want to go beyond what we talk about empath being empathetic. Compassion is allowing yourself, allow yourself to feel the pain in your brother or your sister's life. Allow yourself to feel their pain. That's important. Number five, gratitude. The other day I was asking somebody, uh, what, what, do you, what do you respond if somebody tells you thank you? You know, there are people who do not have the word thank you in their system. And before you get angry at anyone, I don't know whether you have told somebody thank you and they didn't know how to respond. Some will literally keep quiet. The best way of knowing a Christian who has no gratitude in their system, in their composition, is when you tell somebody, thank you, and they keep quiet. Common etiquette, or courtesy if you like, tells us, if someone tells you, thank you, your response should be, welcome. So if you ever tell someone, thank you, and no response, please know, from Father CK's definition, that fellow, has no gratitude in their system. 
That is why a thank you note from the outside means nothing to them. Number, five, number six, live in the present. This is in contradistinction to being hooked in the past. Good people, be hooked in the present, the now moment. Let go of judgment. Some of us are so judgmental. I think we said this on Monday, no, no, Tuesday. Some of us are so judgmental. And we judge people and situations that we have no idea of. <laughs> I have a funny experience. Eh? I'll talk about it without mentioning people. I know of uh, some situations. Well, I have one in my day. A gentleman, I won't tell you the, uh, the level of the person, but the gentleman was talking to me about a certain country, and in that country, a certain place. And this man talked, talked, and talked. <laughs> because, you know, the, we, we didn't have that, we didn't know each other, as in the, the gentleman didn't know who Father CK is and where Father CK has been. So this, this person talked about that country and so many things. Now, what this gentleman did not know is Father CK has been in that country and in that place particularly. And I can tell you what that gentleman said was 97% lies. So he was talking about, you know, in this country, they do this, you know that place, and the guy talked. And there are human beings who will give you stories on on end. But if you ask them the authenticity, hey, these are saying that Jesus is Lord, as if you had doubted. <laughs> so I was just laughing in my heart. Just a gentleman just talking about a country. He has never been there. A place he has never been, talking about situations he doesn't even know. <laughs> And when the fellow was giving me those stories, it was only two months before I was there. I mean, after I was there. So the country that was in question, I had visited two months before. The place that he was talking about, I was there in person. It's only that uh, in my good nature as a human being, not as a Christian, I decided to give him the benefit of doubt. Of course, I did not tell him that, no, I was there last month. In fact, I have the photos here. Of course, I had the photos. But I, I could not do that. But how many people are like that? Passing judgment on things we don't know at all. At all. Passing judgment on, on, on people we have never understood their history. That's who we are. Don't be that person. <laughs> don't be that gentleman. Let me tell you. Never go to talk to a person about a country you have never visited and you don't know the details. Never. Never, never. You may be talking of a... a, if a now, let me... I don't know whether I have something here that I can show you. I normally have, have, have money in this country. Uh, this money is from America. Here's a dollar, eh? So I... So my producer is asking for my money. So pray for him. He looks like a thief. So this money, this is called Euro. Okay. Uh, this is also Dora. Now this is, which is this money? This is, uh, this money is from Jordan. I was in Jordan and I bought a pair of shoes. Hi. <laughs> a nice one. This is the, the, the Jordan, um, Dinners. It's five dinners from Jordan. I picked when I was there. Uh, this is from which country? This is also Jordan money. This is which money? This is the Eastern Caribbean Dora. I love this. This is from the <laughs> North America. It is from Grenada, where I was, where I visited. Thank you. In person. Okay. But now this is the money I want to talk about. 
this. This money, this is called beer. Beer is Ethiopian money. Now, I have a lot of this money here. I have a lot of it. I have a lot of Ethiopian money here. One, two. Here is a lot. Now, let me tell you something. Um, is it this year? Yeah, this year, uh, I was on my way to, not this year. Yeah, this year, I was on my way to Canada. Uh, on my way to Canada, I passed through Ethiopia and I had a, a stay. Think of two hours or something. So I went to buy some coffee. And uh, you realize that in most of these um, airports, the most acceptable money is the, either the dollar or the euro. But uh, Ethiopians love their money. So I thought that I have a lot of Ethiopian money so I can go and pay with the Ethiopian money. After all, I'm in, in, I'm in Ethiopia. There is their country, Bora Airport. So I was there in Bora Airport taking some coffee and I had a lot of the Ethiopian money. When I went to pay, the lady who had sold me some coffee told me, no, this is Ethiopian money but expired. Ha. Huh. This money is Ethiopian but you cannot use it in Ethiopia because it is expired money. So somebody may be talking about money, Ethiopian money, and how you want to go there, buy things, but maybe they don't even know. The note or the currency, the denomination that they are talking about is already extinct or expired, if you like. Sometimes when we talk, it is always important that we are able to have some information. And when you don't know something, please just ask. It is important that you ask because many a times, many a times we talk about many things that we don't even know. I, I, would, I would request that uh, when that time comes, if you have to judge someone, before you judge them, listen to their story. Before you give someone a story about an, some country, you, okay, you don't have to have visited there to know a few things. But please do some good research. Please do. Sometimes we get ourselves embarrassed because we want to live in ignorance. It's not, right. it's not fair. We will never grow spiritually if we do not want to open our, our heart and, uh, and our minds for more information. Please let go of that judgment. Number eight is acceptance. Acceptance means, good people, accepting yourself just as you are. Accept yourself just as you are because God loves you just as you are. Number nine is my best for ages, forgiveness. I have talked about forgiveness until I'll continue talking about it forever and ever. And because forgiveness is the greatest gift that you can receive from yourself. And finally, serving others. Go out there, change the world for others. God bless. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.